Hey, it's Rachel. So because most of you, a lot of you guys are doing the September Whole30, I really wanted to make videos to support you and encourage you that the Whole30 is what I did many years ago to really figure out which foods were affecting me and affecting my fibromyalgia. So the point of this video is I am going to be eating Whole30 today and I'm gonna show you guys what I eat. Hopefully you will get some ideas if you are doing the Whole30 or even if you're just in a cooking rut and you're looking for some recipes. So off to go eat my breakfast. So for my first meal, I cooked up a bunch of these little potatoes. These are the Smart Bite potatoes, as strawberry red, and it cooks in the microwave. So I decided to cook the whole bag, but I'm gonna only measure out one serving size. You can see it says 110 grams. So I'm going to measure out 110 grams on my scale. Quick trick in case you guys have never measured out food before, I actually put the whole container on my scale and I tar it to make it zero. So then as I take off potatoes, it says negative 29 grams. And so this one potato weighs 29.5 grams. And I'm just gonna continue to take potatoes off until I get to my 110. Next, I am going to slice up my potatoes and I'm actually going to fry them just a little bit. Normally I do this with sweet potatoes, but since I had these and they were starting to go bad, I decided to go ahead and use them. Now if you are doing a Whole30, you'll want to cook them in either coconut oil or clarified butter. And you can see I just got this at Trader Joe's. And then the Simply Balanced is the Target brand. They're not that expensive, uh, but because I am technically not doing the Whole30, I'm going to continue using my Pam Olive Oil. Um, you can see it is not Whole30 approved because it does have the soy lecithin in it, plus silicone and a bunch of chemicals that I don't recommend to you guys, but this is what I've been using. In case you are new to my channel, I am intolerant to soy, but for some reason soy lecithin, I'm totally fine with. So I'm okay using these. So I am cooking up the potatoes in the skillet. I'm just going to kind of keep turning it with my spatula until it starts getting like a brown tint to it, uh, which just means it's cooking. now. These are already cooked, but you know, we're just kind of getting them nice and brown. I'm actually going to do a couple servings of egg whites and one whole egg. Now, normally in the past when I would do a whole 30, I would just do two eggs fried so that the yolk, you know, gets all over the potatoes and it's really good and everything like that. But because I'm still counting macros, it basically, if you're new here, that just means that I count how many grams of fat, carbs, and protein I eat during the day. I notice that I am always low on protein and always pretty high on fat. So that is why I'm gonna continue doing a mixture of the egg whites and the large egg. But if you are not counting macros and you have no problems eating high fat, go ahead and have two eggs for breakfast. Egg yolks are not bad for you. They're totally good for you. They're full of nutrients and so why not? So I've got the egg whites and potatoes cooking. Do not mind my overhead fan because these definitely started to smoke. But then I decided why not? Let's add some tomatoes. So I have this Sunset Wild Wonder Gourmet Medley, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna cut some of these up and add them to my potato and egg white mixture. Okay, so that's cooking. I'm going to add one more ingredient. This is the Mrs. Dash Garlic and Herb. Now, this is salt-free. You'll hear a lot of bodybuilders use this because it's salt-free. I do not monitor my salt. I buy this simply because I like the taste. And if you look at the ingredients, it is actually Whole30 approved. So we've got garlic, onion, black pepper, parsley, fennel, uh, oregano, thyme, cayenne, coriander, cumin, 
rosemary, carrot, orange peel, and then it says spice extracts. I don't know what that means, but there's no sugar in this, so feel free to apply liberally. And here is the final result. So not super photogenic, but that's okay. It's still gonna taste really good. This is my mixture of egg whites, the red potatoes, and the tomatoes with the Mrs. Dash. And then I did fry my egg over easy separately, just so that I could get a little bit of yolk in there. And then if you are doing the whole 30, you can still have Chalua sauce. So after I take all of my pretty Instagram photos of this, I am going to smother it in hot sauce. Okay, so it is 2 p.m. My last meal was at 11-ish, and I really want to go to the gym. So I am going to throw together lunch. Yeah, I guess you could call it lunch. It's going to sound a little weird, and I'm totally making this up on the fly, but I think it'll taste really good, and so I'm gonna show it to you guys anyway, even though it's kinda weird. So I still have my potatoes that I cooked this morning. I am going to grab another serving of them and eat that with lunch, and then I'm also going to eat this salmon as my protein. So this is the Bumblebee Pink Salmon Skinless Boneless. And if you take a look at the ingredients, it says pink salmon, water, and salt. And that is it. So this is great. A lot of canned tuna fish actually has soybean oil in it. Uh, so just always read the ingredients. But I bought uh, like a huge packet of these little packet let me try that again. A huge box of these little packets from Amazon and they don't go bad or they don't go bad for a really long time. So these have just been hanging out in my pantry. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm gonna cut up this and I'm gonna heat it in a skillet. Let's see what this turns out like. And this is the final, not very photogenic product. What I added was my horseradish uh, mustard to the salmon and the potatoes. One tip, Whole30 tip, if you don't feel like making your own mayonnaise and you can't eat mayonnaise anymore because it's made out of soybeans, mustard is actually really good with canned tuna or salmon. So I have that mixed up and then I realized that I have no vegetables. So I also made myself a small little salad and I'm going to use this organic balsamic vinegar as my dressing. And this is going to be my lunch slash about to go workout meal. I am about to run to the gym, but I wanted to get some meal prep out of the way. Not sure if I'm gonna have this for dinner or if I'm just gonna have this during the week, but what I did was I put my crock pot on low, and I do have a crock pot liner, I use these all the time. Uh, do your own research, decide whether or not you like to cook in plastic. There is just, yeah, do your own research, I cook with plastic. But I've got five frozen chicken breasts in here. These came directly from the freezer. And I'm just gonna let this cook for a few hours and then I'm gonna add some more ingredients, which one of them is right here. And I will show the rest to you later. Okay, so this chicken has been cooking for about four hours. It is not quite done yet, but I'm going to add the other two ingredients now. And the first one is going to be salsa. So I have definitely put tomatoes in my crock pot chicken before, but I saw a recipe online, I thought I would try it, that had salsa instead of canned tomatoes. So this one is with organic jalapeno, chipotle pepper, onion, and lime juice. And the reason that I got this one, besides that you know it's organic and things like that, if you take a look at the ingredients, you won't see sugar. Organic tomatoes, water, jalapeno, tomato paste, onion, sea salt, lime juice, et cetera, et cetera. So, so many salsas have sugar, added sugar. That's why they taste so good. And so if you are on the Whole30, you really have to make sure that you are reading the labels. 
This one does not have any sugar, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna add, I'm probably gonna add two thirds of this jar while it's cooking, and I'm gonna save the last third to add right before we serve it. And then the other thing that I am going to add, which was in the recipe I saw online, is a half a cup of Worcestershire sauce. Now, uh, this brand in particular is Whole30 approved. I believe the other brands are not. Uh, I bought this huge thing of Costco a long time ago, but you see it's, it is distilled white vinegar. Uh-oh, molasses sugar, just kidding. All right, change of plans. That uh, Worcestershire sauce, not Whole30 approved. So we are going to do apple cider vinegar. And I'm just going to do a fourth of a cup. And yeah, we're, this is an experiment, guys. This might be terrible. We'll find out. So it is many, many hours later. It is actually eight o'clock. My crock pot chicken is most definitely done. You can smell it. It smells pretty awesome. But I'm going to add this. So normally, I would make white rice in my rice cooker and I think that pulled chicken with the salsa would taste really awesome. But because of the Whole30, you can't eat rice. And so a really easy substitute is cauliflower. Now many years ago when I did my first Whole30, this did not exist. So I actually had to use my food processor and chop up my cauliflower and it got everywhere. But now I can just get this at Target. So cauliflower crumbles. What I am going to do is I'm going to heat it up with a little, you can see I put a little coconut oil. I'm just gonna heat it up for maybe 10 minutes, season it, and I basically have fake rice. Now, if you were wondering what kind of seasonings I use, I typically use this one. This one is actually Mariano's brand and it's the zesty lemon pepper. But basically any sort of like lemony, spice I think does really well. The problem with this one is you can see it has cane sugar in it. So can't can't use this one if we're doing whole 30. So instead, so instead I'm just gonna do the original blend of the Mrs. Dash. And we've got oregano and cayenne and garlic, lemon juice, no sugar though. So we are good to go with this one. And I might try to add some garlic as well, but as you can see, I'm pretty much out. So this is cooking away. It's been cooking for about, I wanna say about five minutes. And what you'll notice is the cauliflower will start to look softer. And so you just want to, oops, steam. You just kinda of wanna keep messing with it, I guess you could say, every now and then so that all of it cooks evenly. Uh, I have put a top on top of this so that it steams a little bit, but honestly, I don't think that's necessary. I think just a good 10 minutes over medium heat with stirring is enough to cook everything. And then I'm not gonna do it today, but another thing that I've done in the past is I've added a chopped up jalapeno to the cauliflower and that's pretty good too. So the chicken is out of the crock pot and into a container and then we just shredded it with a fork and the tongs and what I'm gonna do is dump the other one third of the salsa into the chicken. And this is the final product. So this is the salsa chicken with a little of the apple cider vinegar and then this is my faux rice. And yeah, that's gonna be my dinner. Hey, it's Rachel. So on Mondays, I wanna continue releasing like motivational, upbeat videos about I don't know, random topics. And I promise, hopefully, on Wednesdays, we'll see if I can do twice a week. That might be way too much. But on Wednesdays, I plan to release more of my grocery hauls and meal planning and what I ate in the day and 